Hello, hello! Today I will be making a commentary of a premium ship, the Turpids. This was actually given to me by one of my stream viewers, uh, Mudigea. I haven't gotten around to make a commentary on it yet since, uh, well, I had a bunch of ISP issues which forced me away from the game and I think the break was kind of nice as well because I might have been playing a bit too much of this game. But anyway, I am back now and the first thing I wanted to tackle was the Turpids. When I started out, I actually did not like the ship too much because um, I was actually surprised by how bad the dispersion on the ship is. It, it can be very, very RNG-ish. Like, RNG uh, now, that's obviously something that happens on a lot of uh, battleships, but the Turpids especially seems to suffer from a lot of RNG and, in general, quite bad dispersion at times. Of course, RNG is RNG, sometimes you get great hits, sometimes you get no hits. But uh, obviously, it's part of the design. This game, this ship even, is a brawler. It's a close range combatant, which uh, is something I guess a lot of battleship players have issues adapting to, especially because uh, the ship has excellent range. I think it's much like the Fuso, in the way that the Fuso also has fantastic range and uh, great firepower, but it's actually not that good at sniping. It's fantastically good at closer ranges. And the Turpids is kind of the same. The closer you get, uh, the, the stronger the ship becomes. You can see sometimes there was a Mikhail I shot. N almost no damage. Pitiful damage considering his armor is not much to brag about at all. But uh, the ship has some very nice features. Like uh, it's very, very fast and feels surprisingly agile for a battleship. So they've obviously gone, and then there's of course the torpedoes, which is a unique thing for this uh, battleship. All this combination naturally means that you should play this ship aggressively. You should be in their face and basically take the battle to them and try to brawl as much as you can. Having a very hard citadel to hit is pretty much part of this thing. You can see I'm giving a lot of broadside here, it's mostly because the Turpids isn't even aiming at me, so I'm not too worried. But in general, obviously, you should avoid giving a broadside anyway, even if you are a Turpids. Because even if your Citadel can be hard to hit, it can still be hit, and you still take a ton of AP damage. Again, questionable dispersion there when I shot that Kutuzov. Um, like, sometimes it seems really iffy. But, of course, the closer I get, the stronger I get. This is one of the things that often confuse me about other Turpids players. I see them using, first of all, they use Spotting Plane, and they sit back as far as possible. And I mean, what do they expect to achieve from there when I already find the dispersion questionable at, the, like, uh, 12 to 15 kilometers? And they, these are people who are sitting at 20 kilometers and trying to, like, hit shells with this ship. They're obviously not going to have any success, and I find it to be a waste of time in general. So, as I'm playing now, is basically you push in, you be as aggressive as possible. I'm, I'm tempted to repair this turret, but I'm gonna save my repair since I'm confident I'm gonna be start set, be set on fire soon, and might even need the torpedo or something, so it would be a waste, even though I was a bit scared about losing this front turret. Because if you, if you didn't know, if one of your turrets became incapacitated like that, uh, if that turret takes another critical hit, then it will get completely broken. There are two ways to lose turrets. One is, one is an overpen, that rarely happens to battleships. The other is a double crit. Basically, it gets damaged and then it gets destroyed right after. Now, here's the torps. You can see you can actually launch them at quite a good forward angle. I launched the torps on the turpits, and as you see, I'm constantly changing my angle to make myself hard to hit. I use my AP, the front guns I use on the Amage. I'm a bit surprised I've missed the Citadel there, but it happens and the back turrets I use on the Kutuzov. This is where the ship really excels, when it gets to get really, really close range. I deleted him. Now, I'm taking a very risky maneuver. I'm going extremely close to the Sturpets. I don't want to... Uh, I don't want to actually um, ram him, but I wanted to go close enough that uh, if he tries to torpedo me, if they would have actually been reloaded, then... Uh, they wouldn't have time to activate. Torpedoes have a small activation activation range, so the torpedoes have to activate first before uh, they can deal damage. Now here I mess up a bit, I zoom in. You can actually shoot lower if you don't zoom in, if you stay in third person, but I knew I had enough damage to finish him off after landing so many torpedoes on him. Now, 
Normally, I wouldn't give this much broadside to another battleship, I would probably just continue in a straight angle line, but uh, they have so few points, and I know this kill will end the game. And also, this guy shooting HE at me, after, he saw, after I was angled against him, he didn't switch back to AP, so I will be able to delete him with, very, with basically with ease. And you saw how I charged into two battleships and a cruiser, and I basically took a dump on them. A very, very short game. But I got 600k credits, it was my first win of the day since I basically decided I'll make a commentary today. And I got a nice chunk of uh, XP for my captain. The game duration was what, 9 minutes? I basically sailed to one end, there wasn't enough action, I sailed to the other where the action was and then I just charged into them and I got 140k damage and or 141k whatever. And uh, no, 140. So I mean, this ship is very very strong and very very fun. But it's also obvious that a lot of play players are playing this ship very, very wrong. Right, as usual, I will continue with the modules. Well, not much to do about the modules. Uh, consumable ones, I always use the premium repair, which you can get for 22.5k credits. Very well, very much worth it on a battleship since it reduces your repair by 40 seconds. So, extremely important to use. And I prefer to use the premium heal as well. But that's fairly optional. Upgrade wise, gun battery or main battery modification, accuracy, uh, AA guns mods, mods is also optional if you find yourself getting focused by CVs a lot, but honestly I prefer the accuracy. Um, damage control system because the other two are useless. Damage control system mod 2, once again this is a bit optional, you might go for steering gears mods as well for better maneuverability. But personally, I find myself getting HA spammed so much, so I prefer to use this one to reduce the fire damage. And finally, stealth. Um, this one is again a bit uh, debatable. Both are, in my opinion, quite good. But considering the concealment on the ship is already uh, pretty questionable, I kind of like getting it down to 14. Because uh, if you don't have this mod, then... Uh, if you end up in T10 matchmaking, then Montanas and Yamatos and everyone will just shoot you because uh, they know you're basically a damage pinata. Very easy to get a lot of XP and damage from since basically you take a ton of AP damage from everything. So this one I find honestly reduces my damage more than target acquisition system. So I prefer the concealment. Uh, Captain perks wise. I started an entirely new captain because I didn't. First of all, I didn't want to use my Hindenburg captain since it would not be optimal spec for a battleship. And second of all, the German battleships are coming in August, I think it was. So you obviously will, will want a new captain for those battleships. So I figured I might as well start early and just level a new one. And then in August, this will probably be in very good shape, this captain, and I can use it on the new battleship line. Captain perks wise. Situation awareness and basics of survivability, these two are very very important, I always recommend them both. Especially basics of survivability is great for battleships because once again it reduces fire and flooding by 15%. Third verse, because all the other ones are useless for a battleship, I picked Vigilance as my third because you see how offensive I like to play this ship. Um, there's no point in using Superintendent since you won't even like you will rarely get to use all the heals or actually not that rarely but i mean one torp hitting you will already do more damage than a heal can heal so ultimately i find vigilance to be much more important on the terpets i'm saving up for a fourth captain point here and when i do i will get manual uh, fire control this is actually one of the few battleships where i prefer having manual fire control over um, uh, advanced foreign training simply because uh, the AA is very unevenly split on this ship. As you can see, this, this short range AA, the DPS is like 36, 42, 21. Very pitiful altogether. And then we have the 100mm and they are 134. These 100mm guns alone uh, deal more damage than all these lower calibers combined. So that obviously, and by, by a significant chunk, so that obviously means buffing these is uh, the main goal. And the manual fire control, as you can see, it buffs by 100% if it has 85mm or larger. So you will get a 100% buff to these huge guns and you will absolutely shred planes with this combination. 
So obviously manual fire control is my is going to be my next perk. And after I got the uh, manual fire control, I will be saving up for superintendent. And then after I have superintendent, I will be going for secondary armament to buff my AA even more. So that's going to be my upgrade path for the turpets. Anyway, that was my short uh, turpets commentary. I hope you guys enjoyed it.